Hello and welcome to Literary Merit, the show where we tell you what media has value. Spoiler alert, it's all of it. Also, spoiler alert, we'll be discussing spoilers as usual, so here is your warning. I'm Ashley. And I'm Alex. And I'll start by asking, what's new to you, Alex? Well, today, um, I was banished from my home. (laughs) <laughs> um, <laughs> because my sister who I live with, um, they're selling their house. Uh. Um, and so it was open for a ton of showings today. So I had the whole day to basically just get out and kill time and stuff. So I decided to go see a movie. What'd you see? I saw the Kingsman, the, or just Kingsman, oh, the Golden saw- Circle. I haven't seen it yet. I really want to. Well, I love the first movie. I think it just came out, didn't it? Yeah, it came out on Thursday. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, anyway, I don't know. I didn't <laughs> love it, which how'd is you, sad because the, the first one. I loved the first one. Yeah. Absolutely loved it. Stole my heart. But mm-hmm. like, Eggsy. Oh, Eggsy. I don't, It it like it lost its charm. And, and that's what I've been hearing. And like, I th- it didn't help that I went by myself. Like. <laughs> Sometimes funny funny movies aren't as funny when you're by yourself. It wasn't really funny though. Was the thing? Oh no! Like it wasn't a, like the first one was kind of like a comedy. Yeah, of. I mean it wasn't like riotously funny. It more just sort of had a sense of humor about it. Yeah, but and this one. Yeah, I, I don't know. Oh, that's such a bummer. I mean, I still want to see it, but I might not. Need I, to I see think it you quite still as should, and people as I pe- thought I needed to. People will still like it. It's not bad. It's just. Not as good. There was like, I don't know. I was so aware that I was watching it. Whereas good movies, you're like, you're just there. You like just you're get just sucked experiencing in. it. Yeah. yeah. I was like, there is so much plot going on. And like. Yeah. It's just. And it. Mm. I, basically, anytime there is a forced or ill explained romance. Oh no. Not in Kingsman. I just. It, I hate it because, okay, so, and it's not even, like, a sexy romance either, like it should be, like a spy movie, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's always, like, there's if, always, like, yeah, it's sort of like do... femme fatale, like, oh, we're in danger and it's hot. <laughs> no, it's like, it's like, he has a pre-existing girlfriend we've never met. Oh, like, that that he, that he got between the movies. Yeah, that's and so fun. it's like, you, it's really not, and she's great, but, like. It's not fun. I want to yeah. see the beginning of the romance. That's the most fun part. Yeah, and she seems like I don't know. I I mean I like did he, really He's a appreciate. fucking spy. <laughs> yeah, he's <laughs> rad. He's the best. Eggsy's the best guy. I love him. Ugh. He's so so good. Uh, yeah, I mean what I one thing I really loved about that first movie was that um there was no romance. You know, there wasn't a really like a romantic relationship yeah. between him and Roxy. It was just like their colleagues and great friends, and that was yeah. what their relationship was. And it was so good and and right and pure. So, <laughs> so for like a forced romance to show up is a bummer. I mean, it, it wasn't forced in that we're like forced to see them fall in love, but well, like yeah. they had already had a relationship, and you're just like, I don't care about. Why her. is this here? And I don't care about his connection with her. Yeah. Ah, that yeah. sucks. The the villain was amazing. Julianne Moore. Yeah, well, Moore. it's Julianne Moore, right? <laughs> she's awesome. <laughs> she's, like, she's always amazing at whatever she does. This is, like, so, like, they keep calling her, like, in, in the movie they call her, like, a psychopath. But she's, like, wonderful and funny. <laughs> yeah, I heard that she was a high point to the movie. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't say as high of a point as Samuel L. Samuel L. Jackson was in the first one. <laughs> so funny and weird he was um she's funny and weird but like so i don't want to spoil it but basically she has a celebrity that she has kidnapped uh-huh. who who shows up multiple times um and is the perfect choice to be in this role and kind of saves the day so like i That's don't know fun. just it's it's that this celebrity is also very fun a very fun choice oh <laughs> good oh man uh fun little fact about the first movie did you know that um the character that mark hamill plays in the first film that professor guy that gets kidnapped um mm-hmm. that character that like role in the comic that it's based on is actually 
actor and celebrity Mark Hamill, like the ki- wait the kidnapped so, character that they are rescuing in the beginning of the movie is, is actually Mark, Mark Hamill. Hamill is actually so, and so that's why they cast him in that role. But why didn't they just have him as himself? Be- well, and I I think it's because they wanted to tie it more to the actual plot because he was like a climate change scientist and that was like uh, okay. the whole thing that Samuel L. Jackson was doing. So they wanted yeah. it just to be more relevant and that's good. But it's hilarious well, that it was just Mark Hamill. They should have just retconned reality and said Mark Hamill is, is a climate change climate scientist. Climate scientist. <laughs> sure. But yeah, that, I just I really love that that little Easter egg in there. I thought that was very cute. Fun casting. That is very cute. <laughs> We don't so have to anything else I kn- um that's pretty or much it but i know what else I was, I was gonna say i know what's been up with you <laughs> uh, yeah <laughs> so um i got engaged Woo! i mean okay and like <laughs> to be perfectly transparent like we've been basically like we've been planning to get married for a while but we've just recently like bought a ring and announced it publicly Mm -hmm. so like i've been engaged but now i'm like real engaged (laughs) it's it's facebook official it's ring on the finger official yes it is i took a really long time picking this puppy out but i love it well that's good you should you should take take a long time yeah, yeah, I did, I did, and, but this one's, this one's great. I really love it. It's, it's incredible. Beautiful. I love it. It's awesome. <laughs> Tell yeah. the people what it is. Oh well, gosh. <laughs> okay. Um, I mean, it's weird to just describe a piece of jewelry in audio, but it's like a, the, <laughs> it's the center because I don't like solitaire stones. I just think mm-hmm. they look really weird and awkward. Like I don't know, it's personal taste. But um, so it's like three stones. Um, mm-hmm two uh white stones with a black stone in the middle it's black spinal i was looking at black diamonds but they're like stupidly expensive and spinal's really nice i was actually curious about it just like as a stone so i was like reading and Mm -hmm. i guess for like really because it comes in all different colors like you can find it it's naturally occurring and you can find it in like a bunch of different colors and historically it was interchangeable with ruby like they're they occur naturally very close to rubies like geologically um mm-hmm. and so they're there and they just couldn't really distinguish between them for, for so for the longest time like spinals were just rubies like um and it's actually there's a spinal in the uh crown jewels of england the uh Ooh. the black prince's spinal it's like it looks like a big like irregular ruby but it's not a ruby mm-hmm. it's a spinal hmm. that's pretty cool but yeah i love it it's nice. I'm getting used to wearing a ring all the time. It's weird. <laughs> yeah, that would, I think, be the weirdest thing. I remember when those stupid Livestrong bracelets came out. <laughs> and, like, after wearing that for a while and then having taken it off, I didn't wear it for very long, but, like, it, you get, like, the phantom Yeah. Feeling. Yeah, I, I wore a friendship bracelet in high school for several years, and then when I finally didn't wear it anymore, it was like, ah, my wrist. Yeah, you, like, constantly shake your wrist to, like, adjust it, and it's like, yeah. oh, there's nothing there. <laughs> <laughs> it just feels like it's there. But, mm-hmm. yeah, uh, so that's my big news, but it's not really very interesting to talk about because it's like, yep, I got engaged to the person that I've been in a relationship with for eight years, so anyway... Nothing's that different. Yeah, it's except not much. We're of a gonna have a story, big party in nice a few months. Hear. So, <laughs> Ooh. is that like it? Oh, <laughs> a wedding for the wedding. I was like a party about. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, that, I mean, that's all it is. It's just like, oh, we're in a relationship. Let's have a party about it. So, <laughs> yeah. Well, and I, I like that. I like that sort of mentality because you know I've always I don't know weddings are so uptight. Yeah. Like just have a throw a huge party. Let's just have a party with friends, have a nice yeah. time, and then go on a vacation about it. <laughs> there you go. Yep. Um, so, yeah. Uh, but the fun thing is, so I told you um, yeah. last time we recorded that I was going to go see It. And yeah. it is so, so good. It is so good, Alex. <laughs> I've been like, okay. So I didn't see it today, and I think that was because of the timing of when I went to the theater. I didn't, like, plan it out. Yeah, um, it just wasn't convenient. Yeah, and I've been obsessively watching YouTube videos about Pennywise and just mm. the general, like, movie. 
Um, mm-hmm. But I couldn't go through with it today because I honestly don't know how actually scary it is. From what I've it's, seen, it's not super scary. It's remarkably scary. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> okay, then I might alone. not be able to see it. Okay, do, good, 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 good. Like, don't see it alone. <laughs> okay, because, like, I'm pretty desensitized to horror movies. Like, things don't yeah. scare me anymore. Like, I'll see a movie and be like, oh, wow, that's a really scary thing. And then I go home and I'm fine. I was scared for several days after <laughs> seeing this movie. <laughs> it's real. Well, it's it just does a thing so well because it's, you know, the, as a story, it is about childhood fears. Like, yeah. this creature, it turns into the thing that you as a child are afraid of and then Mm -hmm. comes after you as that thing and it feeds on your fear like it specifically targets childhood fears and it does that like it just totally took me back to those like bizarre irrational fears you have as a child where you're like Mm -hmm. something's in there something's out there that thing is scary to me and it, it doesn't necessarily make sense like one of the characters um scott there's this painting in his father's office that he's really frightened by because it's just this weird-looking woman. And he's just like, I don't like it, I don't like it. And he, like, avoids looking at it. And then, mm-hmm. like, it comes to life. Like, the woman co- is, Ugh. like, out of the painting and coming after him. And, like, that's the kind of thing you're scared of as a kid. It's like, yeah. I hate that lady in that painting. I'm scared of mm-hmm. her. And it's like, as an adult, you're like, yeah, that's an upsetting-looking painting, but it's a painting. As a kid, that doesn't yeah. matter. It, uh, yeah. It's... It's it's really good. And Finn Wolfhard is my dude. I love <laughs> that kid more than anything. He's so good in this. He's so funny and so cute and so great. And I'm so excited for Stranger Things, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very much. Like, I really recommend this movie. It's incredibly good, but it is definitely scary. Yeah. Oh, well, that's good and to know. I'll, I tell you, man, you and and listeners will know my feelings on Bill Skarsgård. He has been entirely redeemed. He is <laughs> so good. He's so good. Oof, oof. Like, so, things in this movie work that shouldn't work. They shouldn't yeah. be scary. It should be dumb and weird, but it's terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah. Did you hear the story of how when the kids first saw the whole get up? I didn't. So they held off as late as they could. They mm-hmm. didn't want them to be prepared. So you know to the get used um, to it. Yeah. yeah. So the scene in the movie, and I know this because the trailer um, mm-hmm. with the projector. Oh God, that should that's not have first, been scary. That's the first time they saw him in the makeup. Oh wow! <laughs> so they that was like their genuine reactions. Like, so when they see him, like, in the photo? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Crazy. Because, yeah, that scene, that whole scene in the garage, it's mm-hmm. one of, it's, like, the number one scene that, like, shouldn't work. Like, mm-hmm. by all, like, I, I just, I cannot fathom how they made it work and be scary. Because it's, it, like, thinking about it and what they did in that scene, it's weird <laughs> and dumb, <laughs> but it's so scary. <laughs> yeah yeah that's uh yeah he's just totally he's totally redeemed for me and oh it's good it's good like i uh, I think you should see it but it's very scary <laughs> <laughs> very very scary i'll have a chance i'm sure i have a couple co-workers that want to see it again um one quick thing um did you listen to the latest live adventure zone i have yeah, like Will's oh on gosh. me about it. I know. I need oh, to. It's so, so funny. Like the funniest one I've no, listened actually, to. Actually, it's funny. The reason I the reason I haven't listened to it yet is because normally I'll listen to podcasts while I'm at work. Yeah. Uh, you know, doing my work on my computer. But the last few days, I've just been listening to this musical and repeat. <laughs> <laughs> what like musical? This, okay. I can't believe I, I really didn't hear anything about it when it came out. It's so good. I think it came out in 2015. It's called uh-huh. Natasha, Pierre, and the Great Comet of 1812. Mm-hmm. And I love it so much. It's <laughs> it's actually a very, very minor excerpt from War and Peace. Yeah. Um, 
it's like towards the end of the book, just this sort of incident that occurs. It's not remotely like the story of the novel, yeah. um, but it is so, 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 so good. Um, the the original Broadway soundtrack is incredible. Um, there was It was like off Broadway first, but when they went on Broadway, um, the char- the protagonist character Pierre was played by Josh Groban. And oh. he's remarkable. Well, I mean, so good. we all know this, but like, like he's so good, good in this. Good he's to, so so good to repeat it. <laughs> yeah, he's so 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 good in this. Like, I, I've had sort of a an opinion shift on Josh Groban over, uh, the past like I don't know ten years or so. Like, I mm-hmm. in high school I was like really into him, and then yeah. I got older and I was like I don't know, he's kind of lame. This is pretty dorky. Um, <laughs> and then like. I so, and I was like, he's not even that good of a singer. Ugh. But <laughs> then uh, I sort of got to know, like, what he does besides his albums. And, like, he's just, like, a really funny guy and a pretty great actor. And he mm-hmm. loves Animal Crossing. <laughs> like, when Animal Crossing New Leaf was kind of new, he was just posting on Twitter all the time about Animal Crossing, which is super funny to me. Like, okay, he loved Nintendo it. He like, needs to, like, get on that and have him, like... <laughs> Josh Groban celebrity endorsement com- for Animal Crossing. Or just, or just, like, in the commercials. That would be hilarious. Yeah, no, he's like, yeah, he loved it. He lo- he was like posting screenshots all the time. Like it was good <laughs> stuff. And I was like, okay, this guy's actually pretty cool. And then I was like, okay, I get what you're about. Like you've got this nice voice and this pretty boy face and you go and you make a Christmas album every year and Christian housewives swoon and you make a bunch of money and you can do whatever you want. Like I totally get what you're doing. <laughs> it's Josh Groban. <laughs> um, but no, he's so good. Like I don't want to take up too much time talking about this because we've been gabbing for a while but like it's it's so 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 good like if you're gonna check anything out it's on spotify you can listen to it oh. um the song dust and ashes is josh groban's big number and it's so that's how i found it i was listening to josh groban radio on spotify. <laughs> <laughs> Bill, do you, my opinion of him has changed um i was just in the mood for some josh groban and this song was the first thing that came on and i'm like what am I listening to right now? And like Mm -hmm. the way that it starts out, actually, the line is, is this how I die? And I'm like, (laughs) what? Josh Groban, what are you saying about right now? (laughs) (laughs) So I die. Um, It's very, 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 very good. So I've been absolutely obsessed with it for the Mm -hmm. past like week. So (laughs) I don't really listen to anything else, but I'll get on that with Adventure Zone. (laughs) 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 So... Shall we move on? Sure. <laughs> All right. Well, why don't you, because um, we, we've got kind of a few things we're going to talk about today. Yeah. Um, aside from this 20-minute friggin' <laughs> interlude. <Catch up. laughs> uh, yeah. Our lives are exciting right now. <laughs> so um, first, I'm going to hand it over to Alex because he's got some fun stuff for us. Yeah, so as I think I've mentioned before or multiple times, um, <laughs> you. Uh, I have a chapbook of poetry coming out next month at the beginning of the month, October 8th, um, from Floating Bridge Press. Um, if you don't know me, you can go to their website and purchase it um, on that day or later, but not before. <laughs> um, if you know me, you can just yell at me and I'll sign a copy and give it to you. Um, but anyway, <laughs> I figured I would read a poem or two from the book and we could talk about them or talk about the whole thing in general because it's, it's exciting and it's literary. It's literature. Yes. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the first one I, I'm going to read is um, called The Version of You I Dream of at Work on Sunday Mornings. <laughs> After the song See See Me Rise Up by Chris Rubio. Hmm. I am made of Chantilly lace. You are butcher paper. Nothing sticks. There's garlic in your teeth and hair. Onions in your eyes. My eyes well. Clever ripe cherries spill from your mouth. Too tart to taste. A pucker that never goes away. I am on the ground, linoleum legs crossed, 4 a.m. prayer, paying the bills, folding little sticky papers in the eerie hum of the floor buffer. 
You are constellations above. A hungry thought spread like melted baking wax and semi-sweet chocolate chips. A recipe, no, a spell. A chocolate peanut butter wish. And that's it. Mm, that's nice. Yeah, so, that one... Yeah. That one, the song See Me Rise Up, it, it's like a, a a list of a bunch of things um, that that um, the person being sung to and the singer are. Mm-hmm. And it's just like lots of really strange things like, um, I am made of marble, I am stone, pillar, and salt. Mm. Um, or like, I am piles of paper and cinnamon and chalk. And, and so those were just really, like, interesting ways to, like, talk about yourself or a person. Yeah, these sort of, like, really obscure metaphors. Yeah, that in a strange way, like, they're so nonsensical that they make total sense. Or, like, they're, they don't need to have a specific meaning to make sense. Yeah, it's, it's more of just sort of a, a, a sense idea. Yeah, like, this, this sort of, um, almost like the 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 physicality or texture of the image rather than like the actual so so not not necessarily using like the visual imagery but like other sensory imagery yeah i i notice it's very interesting um with the sort of other person character uh there's a lot of food a lot of food imagery this is yeah so that person in mine i i there's a lot of food in this one and that's also sort of a, a a theme in the book um, in my book, um, oh, the book's called The Myth of Man. I should probably say that. <laughs> <laughs> and it's got a great um, cover, and I'm lucky oh, enough to have seen I, it already. I I so want to share it, but I don't know if that, I need to ask my my editor if like yeah, can I share it? To... Can I share it? Yeah. Um, I mean, it's been sent to print, so I assume. <laughs> I it's assume real, it's, it's but a, yeah, um, but yeah, the the theme of like not necessarily just food, but like um, hunger and consumption Mm. but not um it's not negative it's not like oh you're eating me alive or stuff like that it's like a craving it's like a craving and it there's there's a sexual side to it because there are some sexy poems um (laughs) (laughs) but there's also like a real a tenderness to it so like the end of this poem is um a chocolate peanut butter wish and i was thinking of Mm -hmm. my sister she makes every holiday uh chocolate covered peanut butter balls Mm. um and so sort of describing a loved one or a lover as like that favorite little dessert that special like yeah that treat that has those kinds of special associations yeah and like i and and how like the comparison between oh this is how i feel about you versus how i feel about myself yeah so like the first line is, I am made of Chantilly lace. And it's just like, I don't know if I have a specific reasoning for that line. <laughs> but it it feels right for me, about me. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the next line is, you are butcher paper. And I feel like that has so many meanings. <laughs> yeah, and well, and then the, just the juxtaposition of the two. Exactly. The lace is soft most of the time. Um, very and delicate like, and delicate fragile and fragile and um you know holes in it and all that whereas the butcher paper it's like you know repels it's sturdy water and utilitarian. It's sturdy, utilitarian <laughs> it's also what you put chocolate covered peanut butter balls on <laughs> um but yeah and the sort of the title the version of you i dream of at work on sunday mornings um so on sundays at Target, where I work, um, I put up the the ad for the week. So, like, all the uh, little ad signs. Uh-huh. And so this is... I literally wrote this poem while listening to the song See Me Rise Up by Chris Rubio while on the floor, like, sticking these little signs up on the shelves. Oh. Okay, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I definitely noticed the the sort of imagery associated with that task and, you know, the place that you found yourself in. Yeah, uh, and... With the buffer, it, the floor buffer. Yeah. And the, <laughs> I hate that fucking floor buffer. <laughs> <laughs> it, 
Because it's like it's gas powered. Oh my god. Ew. <laughs> it really? stinks and it's it's so fucking loud too. I bet. <laughs> Ugh. Yeah. But I mean, hey, it's in a poem that's being published, so yeah. thanks. But, I mean, yeah, it's <laughs> and I I like the idea of the, these sort of like romantic daydreams occurring in this very mundane and unpleasant circumstance. Yeah, and like how like a song can sort of drift you up and away out of that not necessarily horrible place, Just... but like dull undesirable (laughs) yeah undesirable and like uninspiring but you can somehow still be inspired yeah yeah so that's where that one came from and yeah the you you don't see it so much in this one um but another really really probably the the heaviest theme in the book is um masculinity or manhood the, yeah, um, uh, thus the title thus the title the myth of man and like that has so many connotations which is why i like that title mm-hmm. um the title is like m- the concept of man or manhood is a myth or like the myth of the creation of man or manhood mm-hmm. or the mythology of some particular person Mm-hmm. Um, and I think all of them really apply, and and that's that's sort of why I chose that title over the original title of the of the collection. What was that? The original title. I love this title so much, but it's like not good. It's like great, <laughs> but but like not in a good poetry sort of way. It's not right. <laughs> it's not right. Um, but anyway, I love the title. It's um, without rhyme or reasoning. <laughs> that is cute yeah it's very cute and the the, you sh- the you poem save it for something <laughs> yeah and there's a poem in the in the in the book that um that has riesling in it mm-hmm. um, and that sort of um works with that whole consumption um uh in indulgence in yummy things mm-hmm. like like mm-hmm. i never i never want to like the indulgence to be negative, you know, it's not like you shouldn't be eating that. No, you should be eating that. (laughs) Enjoy it. Yeah. You deserve to. Yes, exactly. Um, and that, that actually makes me want to read this particular one. Um, it's not the one I was going to read, but I think it fits what we were just talking about. It's called, um, hate eat, Uh, (laughs) hate hyphen eat. All sort of one, yeah. Yeah. I want eaten to be sexy again. Food as love, food as fuck, no longer for hate. Eat him. Lick the members of his body. Sit up and using your best table manners, feast. Crumb whole grain vegan peanut butter cookies and check up on past lovers via the World Wide Web. Hoping they are all right. Praying they are not quite as all right as you. You are a self-filling stomach. No need for eat. A man, amen. A memory of mass. Forget breakfast. Break fast from habit. Full. Father to toenail. Fat. Free from childhood to deathbed. Gone are the days of avoiding the past because your two-day diet failed. Roll. Hip to lover's tongue and eat all day long. Fuck and be round. (laughs) (laughs) So that's, that's like the clearest example of like the food and the um, sexuality sort of Mm-hmm. coming together on that one yeah i guess it's uh i i i also really enjoyed the um hoping they are not quite as all right as you <laughs> right that's such like a toxic thought to have but we and all have it oh my god every <laughs> you know that everybody has that yeah uh, <laughs> <laughs> hashtag relatable Yes, extremely, extremely. (laughs) 
<laughs> I had a um, a uh, fiction professor in college who didn't think relatable was a word and so would not let us use it in discussing each other's work. What? Yeah. Like, didn't think it was a word or just didn't respect it as a word? I probably didn't respect it as a word, but said it wasn't a word, so. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Hmm. But like, why? Why? I mean, I guess, I mean, I can understand that feeling like an overused term. It's like, okay, yeah, you, you read this and you could relate to it. But like, why though? Talk about that. Yeah. Not just that and you that... respond to it, but what you're responding to and why. Yeah. So in, in, in terms of like teaching us how to discuss each other's work, it's good to try to get away from that word because it, it just says, it doesn't really oh, say anything. Uh, it's a, exactly, and that's her, that was her point. You know, she she's like you. A, anything is related to anything. It's like that six degrees of separation or whatever. You know, mm-hmm. um, yeah, it's all human so, yeah, experience. So, so <laughs> let's talk yeah, a little but, deeper. But, yeah, um, but I think in terms of that line you were talking about, like that the line's already a little bit deep, um, and we can just relate to it <laughs> if we want yeah. to. Yeah, I, yeah, but yeah, there's a lot of very very interesting um sort of metaphor going on with the the idea of eating yeah um i mean literally says food is love food as fuck (laughs) (laughs) which again it's gonna be taken multiple ways um yeah uh, do you have any like questions about the whole um, thing that you might have sort of i'm trying to so okay so uh, there's this sort of a um a metaphor running through it of the sort of eating and the consumption of, you know, a lover or, you know, a, a prospective lover. Um, is that, you know, sort of a, a main theme, would you say? What 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 other sort of ideas are you exploring in this chat book? Um, well, there's a little, a tiny, tiny bit of, like, mythology that's touched upon. Um, it, I don't, like, go into, like, Greek heroes or whatnot um but there's a there's a poem called neptune more about the planet than the god um Mm. and then and then the title poem the myth of man also sort of harkens uh quite a bit to um icarus um so there's a little bit there's a tiny thread of that um but yeah i would say that manhood and gender along with um food are probably the the biggest themes but there's also um the natural world is what my editor sort of put it as he's like cuz there's there's um a whole poem about um a tree as a specific tree in Colorado that is an 80,000 year old tree mm-hmm. but it's like a whole forest of that same tree oh yeah yeah, there's mm-hmm. a there's a similar forest in Oregon, but I don't think it's quite as old. Yeah, so that's again like sort of that natural. And I I love nature, even if I don't go hiking. <laughs> yeah, you, I find you it, appreciate it conceptually. <laughs> I do, and there's there's a couple there's another poem about about a tree too, but it's more of a. It's more of. The symbolism, not necessarily the symbolism of tree, because that sounds really vague and stupid. <laughs> but, but like, imagining, uh, well, I'll, I'll tell you the title, but I'm not going to read it. Um, it's called, uh, I was never the tree in a school play, but I have mastered the part. Okay. And that yeah. one's, mo- that one's more of about, um, playing a role rather sure. than being a tree. Yes. <laughs> yes, I can see and, that. And that one kind of came off, came out of um, the Lumineers, their newest album, Cleopatra. They have a song called Cleopatra. Um, oh yeah, that's a great one song. Line... Oh, I love it so much. I, it's it's both the first song and the last song of the playlist I made. Um, they're different <laughs> versions. They're different versions of it, so it's not just the same song. But um, there's a line in it that was originally the epigraph of the whole book, um, and it's um, I've played or sorry, um, I've read this script. And the costume fits, so I'll play my part. Mm-hmm. And for me, that felt like 
I've been dressing up this way as a man for most of my life that I can recall and I know how to do it so I'll just go ahead and do it so you're talking about sort of gender performance yes Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and not necessarily how I feel now but definitely at the time of writing the whole thing like it felt like like you know how to do it so just do it Mm mm-hmm it's easier just to it's, continue yeah. doing that. Yeah, or maybe not easier, but you, you know the script, you know. you. It's mm-hmm. less scary, I think. Mm-hmm. And so you that, know that it works, so you just... Keep... Yeah, you know that it works, and... Yeah, and it's ne- it's never, like... I don't think it's ever written out precisely like that in the whole book, but... Mm-hmm. It's, I mean, I hope people get that from it because there's a lot of questioning that goes on. Sure, sure. So when um when would you say you wrote the bulk of this work? Ooh. Um, because you mentioned how you felt at the time. So how long ago yeah. was it that you were writing most of it? So there, it's odd because the poems are from so so scattered places. Like there are some that are that I wrote in in college, which was, I probably wrote them through four, four or five years ago, but college was three years ago. Um, yeah, but I wrote them early on. Um, and then I threw one in that was from a couple months ago. So they're really all over, but they all sort of, you know, when you, when you're thinking about something so much, Mm -hmm. your perspective changes a little bit on it, but it's still going to be there. Yeah, well, and this seems really, um, you know, personal and autobiographical. And so oh, yeah. even if, you know, you're sort of feeling like you're growing and changing, like that's still an accurate description of, of you and who you were at that time. Yeah, and the the, the weird part about it was, um, so I was going through an editing and a couple poems my editor really wanted like some more more of. And so going back through, I was like, how am I supposed to add more? I don't necessarily feel this way, at least about this poem anymore. What am I doing? Yeah. So a couple yeah. of the poems changed quite a bit. They they sort of went from um, being about, like, loneliness of being a queer young person to being, like, why are we lonely and young and queer? Like, <laughs> yeah. what, 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 is, what do we have to fight against? Like, what are, what do people say about us what does the world say about us that we can't feel love yeah sort of directing the navel gazing outward <laughs> yes exactly as it were <laughs> i'm gonna i want to pick a line um from the poem neptune because it just it works perfectly um he has the names of men who discover and claim comet past encircling his neck oh so like ah it's just like what people, again, just like what, what you've been told your whole life, mm-hmm. make sort of at at, at, a, at some certain points, you feel that way, even if that's not really how you feel. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> you've been told it so many times that it seems right. Yeah, you've sort of digested it. You've. Yeah, you've internalized it. Yeah. Is there anything else you want to... Well, you would mentioned a playlist. Um, does that exist anywhere? Or do you just have it, like, in your iTunes? My Sorry, what you cut you, out? Oh, you, uh, you mentioned a playlist? Oh, yes. Oh, okay. So, it's on Spotify. Um, I, okay. It's available for other people to listen to. Um, I, I guess I could, we could post the link. Yeah, um, yeah, if the... we can link it in the show notes, yeah. I, I think that'd yeah, be Yeah, I posted fun. it on, on, on Facebook and on Twitter. It's um, got a little picture of me of when I was a little kid as the Aww. picture. <laughs> but yeah, it's 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 almost one for one, a song for every poem. I think there's maybe one extra song in there, um, just because there's the same song twice. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, and, and, and the songs that are that are referenced in the in some of the um 
epigraphs of the poems uh, are are there as well. Cool. Yeah, I think that's that that could be interesting to to put up there and share. Yeah, it, I mean, it, and I think it will help people listen to it. And I I also think that music is a really good gateway to poetry for people that don't necessarily understand or feel like they're not allowed to understand poetry. Yeah. Cause yeah, it's a music isn't necessarily like a simplified poetry, but it's um it's usually less work. Yeah, it's it's more accessible maybe. Yeah, it's more accessible and it, it's more inviting too, for sure, with <laughs> because you have music helping invite you in, not yeah. just Yeah, and, and just sort words. of culturally, it's more sort of yeah. mm-hmm, friendly. For sure. Yeah. <laughs> Um, cool. Well, do you have any sort of last comments you want to make on it? Anything else you want to say about the book or the launch or anything? Um, well, the launch is happening in Seattle, which is really fancy. It'll be my, yeah. it'll be a big city sort of deal. <laughs> it's um, very metropolitan. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I just want to emphasize that it's entirely queer. Like the po- <laughs> the book is just like, there's sex with i don't know that's so, so stupid <laughs> but it's it's about queerness and queer sexuality and... it's about sexuality and identity and specifically um sort of with with gay with 100 percent with gay relationships and then also towards the end um relationships in terms of gender as well if that makes okay. sense okay um and i i just wanted to read the title poem uh yeah right before we stop talking about it um it's really <laughs> really short but it it i think it you'll, you'll understand after i f- read it uh, why it's the title of the book the myth of man i have known the smooth walled stone watched but not noticed as acid drizzle ate away at height I mixed the salty paints that man turned tattoo and fresco. I have even collected feathers for man to fashion bluebird escape. But now I am left inside man's walls while you soar beyond, no longer waited. Hmm. Well, okay. Myth of Man is coming out. What, what's the date that it's... Launching? October 8th uh, October is, is when 8th. The, the reading is, and that's when I'll get my hands on the first one, and I believe that's when they'll go for sale online as well. Okay, yeah, so we'll we'll link the playlist, and we'll link the Oh, yeah, the nobody, website. Will be, nobody will be able to escape, like, seeing, All the marketing. seeing me, me post about it. I'm going to not shut up about it for the rest of my life. <laughs> well, good. Okay, so, yeah, everybody, you have no excuse. You know where to find it. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, the last thing we were going to talk about today with our last little bit of time was something we intended to talk about some time ago and just never really got around to. Um, and, and something that, is... that, that I can't really participate too much in, but I'll be here to listen and ask questions. Yeah, well, yeah, we just, we did your thing, now we'll do my thing. Exactly. Uh, so, we're following up on our... Uh, solid state analysis because I finally <laughs> read the comic. Uh, uh, yeah, I wanted to uh, loan it to you so that you could read it, but Kindle won't let me loan that one. They don't like it. They don't like you to do that with that one. You can you can loan certain bu- books, but not others. So I just had the dumbest thought. Yeah. I was like, what if I got? Um, oh God, now I'm blanking. What the um, the ebook reading? thing what that that service that has audiobooks sorry oh audible audible what if i got audi- audible and looked it up on there and i was like duh it's a fucking comic you can't, it's a comic <laughs> can't do that uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, okay. it wouldn't be nearly as interesting i'll tell you that yeah um <laughs> so um honestly we were pretty close i mean in the yeah yeah, the um, the album you know is 
it's not very obscure. Like it 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 really tells a story mostly pretty concretely. Um though I will say there are a couple things we didn't really consider um that some of the songs could be from the point of view of someone other than one of the bobs or the AI. And in fact, some of them are. Um so Square Things, the mm-hmm. uh I think that was one of, one my of the early right? tracks. Hmm? I think that was one of our both of our fa- one of our favorites. Yeah, I loved that one. And actually, I'm pretty sure it's not really supposed to be Bob, um, current, like normal Bob, not future Bob. I I I think that it is Ray who is this character that we had no way of anticipating. Um, so Bob, our Bob, current day Bob. He uh, works for this company, which is sort of like Google, called Bougie, yeah. <laughs> and uh, Ray is like the patriarch of that company. He's sort of a Steve Jobs type. I'm not really sure what to call him because he's just sort of like this grumpy old man. Um, he he definitely isn't coded like you know a a Steve Jobs or a you know whomever, it, but. Um, he's the one who sort of built the company and yeah. mm-hmm. he and Bob are sort of in opposition. Bob is sort of his protege. He like okay. works for him and sort of support. He's, you know, he's really integral to the company, but he's not like the figurehead of the company. Mm-hmm. And, uh, Ray is basically taking people's data and selling it. And Bob thinks this is unethical and there are protests happening about it. Um, and so what happens is, you know, Bob is like, I'm going to leave this company. I quit. Like, how much of that code did I write? Like, you need me. And Ray's like, whatever, I don't need you at all. Leave then. And so in retaliation, Bob writes a program, a spider, and it's (laughs) pretty crazy what he does. And it's like the bad thing that Bob did that everyone got mad at him about is Uh he wrote uh this spider Intending it, basically, it's going out there and getting everyone's information and putting it uh, out for everyone to see. Intending to make people's data worthless oh, okay. by, like, leveling the playing field. And everyone yeah. is like, oh, my God, how could you do this? And he's like, what? Like, I saved the day. And they're like, no, you didn't. You <laughs> ruined everyone's lives. Like, everyone gets super, super furious with him um, for doing this thing, putting that spider out. But that spider is the program that eventually oh. achieves sentience. Um, he just, like, put some sort of AI code into it and <clears throat> didn't really think it would develop into anything but like as it went through people's information it sort of learned and grew and achieved sentience Mm -hmm. um and uh one day he like is asked by um by ray to like come back to the company because he's like yo this thing that you made and bob's like what do you mean like yeah i made it um and he's like no it's something else now and like bob has this really fascinating conversation with this ai that calls itself luna um Mm -hmm. and it's like anyway like bob's like uh what are you and it sort of answers some questions about itself and it's like yeah i don't really like it here because i learned a lot about you people and you're the reason I'm leaving. And it gets into this satellite and takes off. <laughs> um, and so that's, it's weird. Um, and that's when we get the sort of time jump to um, Bob's happy married life. Um, yeah, mm-hmm. Basically nothing really occurs between then. It's just like, okay, I guess that happened. Bye. Um, <laughs> and then in during Bob's adult life, is uh, when some kind of an apocalypse happens. It's actually not what we thought because the the AI has left. It's not okay. on Earth. Mm-hmm. And so the apocalypse that occurs is sort of vague. Like, I'm not sure what caused it, um, but the wall that's being built um, and, like, the city inside, it's actually Ray has built it. It's, like, this weird, like, apocalypse colony yeah. run by this corporation. Uh-huh. Uh, so that's what's going on there. And, like, some people decided, Bob included, not to join them. And they, like, get these sort of exosuits and just stay outside in the dying world. Um, and, uh, future Bob, he, 
<laughs> he's an interesting fella. Um, so he lives in this colony in the future, like 800 years in the future. Mm-hmm. And uh, everybody, like, wears these, like, suits all the time with these helmets. And, like, everything is very, like, happy all the time. Everyone calls each other buddy. And we realize it's because that's what, like, f- it's like that's their this world's version of Facebook friend. Like, they're called okay. buddies on yeah. the Bougie website. And so mm-hmm. everyone calls each other buddy all the time. And that's just sort of the parlance of this world. Mm-hmm. Uh but he has this accident. Um, so he's like built. They're like continuing to build this wall. Like they're building a wall forever. And there's some sort of an accident. Some rocks fall, and Bob's helmet gets broken. And so it's got this hole in the front visor, uh, and he can't take it off. Like it's stuck on his head now, and he like can't get anyone to replace it because the bureaucracy is terrible. Um, and so he can't like properly eat. And he can't take his pills, which are mentioned in um, All This Time, the song mm-hmm. All This Time, the uh, the pills that they take. Like, everyone is required yeah. to take these pills. Oh, by the way, this colony is still being run by Ray. He's, like, over 800 years old now because of these pills that he takes. Oh, like, he's been that's... taking them all this time, and that's they're keeping really him alive. Yeah, it's really creepy. He's, like, super ancient, and he lives Bob. in this, like, vat of liquid, and it's mm. really weird. But um, Ray isn't able to take his pills anymore. And he starts, like, having dreams, and he doesn't know what dreams are. Yeah. And he finds this skull in this old, old helmet. And we realize later, oh, this is past Bob's skull mm-hmm. in his helmet. Um, And he, like, finds it, and he, like, keeps it. It's very weird. He, like, secretly hides this skull in his room, and, like, it's his <laughs> little friend. Um, But his job is to, like, track the moon which is weird like he has to every day like like draw on this map where the moon is at Mm. like like he's like tracking the progress of the moon and he's like why do we have to do that and they're like well we just want to make sure it's still there and he's like why (laughs) would the moon not be there anymore and it's because it's actually luna uh Uh, okay it's the ai um but like bob future bob is like like behaving differently because he's not taking his pills any longer and he's like being creative and fun and spontaneous and having dreams and um one day the moon is gone and they're like where did it go bob and he's like i don't know it was there yesterday (laughs) (laughs) and she's gone um and he ends up flipping the destroy switches when they after they like He's like, I'm in trouble, and this is bad, and I don't like this place. I'm going to set the switches to destroy. And he blows up the colony. And he and some people decide to, like, peace out and go live in the world the way that past Bob did. And mm-hmm. um, eventually, like, they live there for a very long time in, um, you know, just sort of, like, trying to make a life. And eventually, yeah. like, Bob grows old, and he's, like, the last one. And he, like... Uh, his robot friend he's got a robot friend he's great um he's like powered (laughs) down and like bob is like the last one there and this accident that happens like his helmet finally like breaks all the way and he's able to take it off for the first Mm -hmm. time and he's just kind of like laying there like you know the last one and finally free from his helmet and then this thing comes zooming down and it's luna and she like hovers right in front of him and that's the end of the comic oh cool yeah, like she, so she's the one that's come home, um, yeah. which is interesting. Like we were, we sort of had it backwards. We thought that the AI took over the Earth and was running things, yeah. but actually the mm-hmm. AI is the one that left. Yeah, and, and then the came home. Took over. Yeah, and and Ray sort of took over the world. So that yeah, the sort of rogue element we didn't anticipate was Ray. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. But yeah, I think that pretty much. Other, I mean, yeah, so that that's the main thing that was different. Because, yeah, like, Don't Feed the Trolls, that's Luna, like, learning about humans. Yeah, and, mm-hmm. yeah, all of that. So, so we just sort of had things a little bit backwards. <laughs> There's a lot of really, not necessarily scientific, science fiction tropes, but, like, I don't know, just the stuff that works. Like, that what you're explaining really, really reminds me of The Giver. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I mean, in sort of the whole, like, 
no longer prescribing to or being forced into uh, the sort of medicated worldview. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I am curious still about the tracks um, uh, All to Myself, parts one mm-hmm. and part two. I'm not... <sighs> I'm not really clear still on those and like what's going on because there is no like you know this isn't the matrix this isn't like a robot overlord situation yeah so i'm not sure still what's going on with those and like pull down the stars like i had assumed that was sort of the ai wanting to be appreciated by people yeah. But well, and, that's and not those, really those those might be sort of in there and just not necessarily explained in the course of the comic. Like it can't obviously do everything the album can and vice versa, but like I just I don't, don't even see that in the character. I mean like hmm. she she I guess she, I don't know. Um they Luna is sort of feminized. Um yeah. but she is just kind of absent for most of it. Like, she's, like, bothered. She's, like, disgusted by people and then leaves. And then one day she comes back for future Bob. So I don't really know. Because future Bob Interestingly, does... once once he's about to die. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's like... And he's the last one left. Yeah. She's well, like, yeah, thanks for taking really... care of him for me. <laughs> yeah, we don't really know what happens to the colony... Yeah. Like they just like just Bob and some people decide to leave. Mm-hmm. Um I imagine they just sort of rebuild what blew up and carry on, but I don't really know. People are just like, "Hey, we saw what you did and we like it. We don't want to live here anymore. So, can we follow you?" And they just kind of piece off into the wilderness. Um Yeah, I don't know. It's it's interesting. Like I would need to sort of compare them a little bit more in order to maybe find these connections because some of the songs like there's direct references like yeah. some lines are pulled right from the songs mm-hmm. um and then other ones it's it's a little harder to figure out where they land and yeah part of it might be the structure because um the bob's stories are, are at times sort of told simultaneously oh, okay mm-hmm. they're sort of side by side and so you know cutting back and forth um so, I don't know, but it, it was very interesting. It's a great comic. I, I think people should read it. I really, really liked it. And because it, it's um, written by Max Fraction, who's awesome. And yeah, it's a it's a good one. It, oh, and one thing I thought was really interesting, too, because I was thinking, I don't know why it didn't occur to me before. So the the book is is square shaped and mm-hmm. it's like square things. Yeah. And in the beginning, especially <laughs> Almost all of the panels, it's uh, all the pages are four square panels. Oh, nice! That's cool. Yeah, it's like this grid. Um, a lot of the time, like all, it's all very geometric and square. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it was. It's it's a great little visual connection to um, the themes. Is there any way you could sort of describe like the style of the art, or? Uh, I mean, it's fairly cartoonish. Okay. Um. Let's see who did the who did the art i'm blanking on it's by albert montes um what else has he done because that might give let me look him up too yeah uh, okay yeah yeah Mm-hmm. that's cute very cute yeah yeah it's it's fairly cartoony um lots of fun sort of bright colors very sci-fi Yeah, I, I, I liked it a lot. And it's a quick read, too. It took me, like, about a half an hour to read it. Um, and you can... It's pretty inexpensive if you buy it on Kindle, um, though it would be cool to have the real book. Do you, What Kindle do you have? I don't. I just have the app on my phone. Oh, okay. Because I was going to say, I have the, like, the just the basic Kindle. Um, oh, yeah. So I, I wouldn't get any color. Yeah, I don't even know if you could get it on that one. I don't know either. I'm sure you could. It just would probably just be in black and white. But yeah, I mean, you can do it on your phone. You can you can read it on your computer even. Like, Amazon is not going to bar you from purchasing something from them. So 
<laughs> they do what they can to make it accessible. They make it as them. easy as possible to buy things. Exactly. You, anything that can display color pictures, you can read this on. So, but yeah, it's really great, and I'm uh, I'm happy that that Joko made this thing happen because it's it's a really cool project. Yeah, and I don't know. It's always nice to. I don't know, spice up your, like, not just your life, but that's so your, <laughs> your, your career, your, your oeuvre. <laughs> yeah, and like, and like, as a, as a reader, like, it's nice to expand to, like, if people that don't necessarily read comics or graphic novels, I really ha- recommend trying them out, especially like, finding some sort of indie project. yeah. It's it's easier to get in. Like, don't start with superheroes. Never do that. I mean, uh, <laughs> they're fun and great, but like, but they're I don't they're know. they're hard to. It's hard to get in because it's just such like a where large do you even body. start? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Where I I still can't really read superhero comics, but uh, yeah. I mean, just find something like something like this is great because it's a it's a fairly short self contained story, and that's it. That's the whole thing. Um, so it's very easy to get into. Um, I made a purchase back in uh, August, not October. Um, uh, it, it's this website and subscription. I don't think they do a subscription, but it's this website and it's like a box deal. It's called Short Box. Hmm. And every every like issue of it, they have like a couple comics together with like some little doohickey thingies, um, and you you just buy it and they send it to you, and it's not like you have to get it every month or whatever. Mm-hmm, um, just a thing you can buy. Yeah, and I bought it because um, one of my favorite uh, artists had a, a little book coming out in it, and it was the only way to get a hold of that book without like going to meet him. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I bought it, and I was super happy with everything else that came in it. It was entirely queer. Um, oh, cool. At least this sort of box was. Um, there was some queer sci-fi in it. There was some queer fantasy in it. Um yeah, it was it was great, and they were all they're all comics, so cool. Yeah, and they're and they're very like I don't know. Go back and listen to our comic queer comics episode. It's very that. <laughs> yeah, it's a good episode too. <laughs> <laughs> that does it for today's episode. Thanks for listening. Please subscribe to us on YouTube if you want. We are now available elsewhere, though. Yes, you can find us on iTunes and Google Play and uh, Anchor.fm. And total props to you, Ashley, for getting that set up. If you don't know, I basically just show up and talk. Ashley does <laughs> everything else. So, oh, thanks. Thank yeah, you for like. On, I'm still yeah. working on getting the whole backlog up there. Um, I'm gonna do some more work this weekend. It's a bit tedious to get things sort of up and transferred but once i have the whole backlog it's going to be pretty simple to just go ahead and set it up when because i'm going to continue uploading to youtube because why not we've got it but yeah it doesn't um, hurt once yeah once i've got the whole backlog then you're you're going to be able to start finding new episodes on uh google and itunes which is so exciting because the f- number one thing that everybody that there was a few people that have listened to us have said is you know youtube unless you have youtube red which literally nobody does um you can't listen without the with the screen off on your device so um this will alleviate that um now you have no reason not to listen (laughs) yeah like just listen to us talk at you please yeah put it on when you're (laughs) in your car yeah serious but like in not in all seriousness. In in joking, in levity. Um, in jest. In jest. Um, in jest. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, just play it and don't listen. Like, <laughs> if you would, we'd appreciate it. <laughs> like it that's, helps. That's the least you can do. <laughs> the least you can do is just put it on and walk away. <laughs> um, but like an iTunes review would be amazing. Like. Even just a rating, just a rating, click yeah. on that star, just something helps people or, find us. Or and... also, like, letting us know, like, person to person. I've had that a couple times, and it's really nice. Yeah, or, you know, just let us know, like, if there's something you want us to talk about. Like, I would, I would welcome somebody yes. letting us <laughs> have a topic. Please, tell us what to say. Yes. <laughs> it's hard coming up with 
things to talk about. So um, if there's something you think would be interesting, you know, put it in the comments, send us a message, whatever you want to do. Um, or tweet us on tweet Twitter. Tweet us! At Lit Merit Pod. <laughs> uh, um, if you have, like, I know we're sort of literary centered. Um, if you have an idea as far as like a book club sort of thing, like you have a book you want us to read, I would suggest not so much that just because we're both like hustling people. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> like that barely have time for this. So <laughs> Yeah. But if there's a movie you want us to talk about or even a TV show. A comic would actually be a really comics. good one. If it's an accessible comic. We can usually both afford a comic, and we can usually devote, you know, that much time to a comic. So we'd love that. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, just seriously, any ideas, like, if, if there's something you would in be interested in hearing us talk about, please let us know. I would love to hear anybody's thoughts on anything at all. If there's something you don't want us to talk about, <laughs> then I guess <laughs> tell us that. I don't know. Just talk to us. <laughs> okay. Uh and thanks to Jonathan Colton for the use of our theme song, Fraud, from his album, Artificial Heart. Until next time, remember, no, no guilty, guilty pleasures. pleasures.